Arnold Horshack turned 43 years old Wednesday. <laughs> if that doesn't make you feel old, then perhaps the notion that there's some nostalgic aspect to the Jose Canseco Mark McGuire reunion in Oakland will. The term Bash Brothers is 10 years old. It was one decade ago that McGuire followed up Canseco's Rookie of the Year season with one of his own. Next thing you're going to tell me, John Travolta is a big movie star or something. Here's Dave Campbell. Mark McGuire, six foot five, two hundred and forty-five pounds. Jose Canseco, six foot four, two hundred and forty pounds. Two of the most powerful men in the game. And now he just pounds one to left field. That is in the fifth deck. They've hit 657 home runs between them and were teammates for five and a half years. They were the Bash Brothers. They popularized the forearm shiver as a way of celebrating their prodigious blast. But both McGuire and Conseco feel the moniker of the Bash Brothers is now passe. I think Bash Brothers is something of your path kind of old, kind of stale. No, we never really came up with the Bash Brothers to begin with in the sense of the, the, the name. I mean, we just bashed forearms all of a sudden in the media. Hey, look, the Bash Brothers not exploded from there. As far as the Bash Brothers, I think uh, we'll start something new. So if people out there want to have a new name for us, it's all for, uh, I'm all for it. These Bayside Bashers will start anew with many differences from the Bash Brother day. They're both in their 30s now, and the years have taken their toll. The two towers of power have been riddled with injuries during their days apart. In fact, they've only played the same day 292 times over the past five seasons. McGuire has missed 47% of the A's games over the last four years, while Conseco has averaged just 92 games a year over the same span. I think that's the number one goal for myself, staying in the lineup. I know that if I get 150 games under my belt in one year, I'm going to put up some devastating numbers. McGuire's numbers have been awesome despite the injury. He hammered 52 home runs last year in just 130 games, and his ratio of home runs per at bat was the best in baseball history. It was also enough to earn the admiration of Conseco, who has predicted a 60 home run season in his teammates' future. I mean, it's just incre incredible. I mean, his, his home runs per at bat are just devastating. Uh, I, for myself, the last two or three years, I can fit him back. Oh, uh, the best power hitter in baseball that there is now and has ever been. I mean, that's, that, that's saying a lot. You're talking about Maris and Babe Ruth and Hank Aaron. And, uh, Mac is that type of player. Such high praise is telling. Not just of McGuire's ability, but also how things change. Now his teammates, Conseco and McGuire, are closer than ever before. When we first played together, um, I never really knew him. You know, he was a type of player that didn't allow anybody to get to know him. When I first started out, uh, you know, at times quiet and shy, and I guess I was taken as being arrogant and, and, and aloof. Since he's gone through a lot of things uh, in his life, um, uh, he's come back to the A's. He's, he's totally different. He's much more approachable. He likes to have fun with the young kids. And uh, I see a much uh, nicer and uh, fun-loving guy. Dave, thanks. For the New Yorkers. One matinee in the American League, the Indians and A's in Oakland. Kevin Mitchell hit his first home run of the I season last, last night. Lost their and in the top half of the second inning with runners on the corners, he hit his second home run of the season off Willie Adams. A three-run shot, 3-1 three Cleveland. Mark McGuire looking for his first tater of the season. A's are down 4-1 to one until now. Oral Hershiser is the victim of the shot. Hershiser retired the first. First a foul ball. This would be the home run. A's trail at four to two, bottom half of the eighth, score tied at four. Eric Plunk facing Geronimo Barroa, and Barroa goes deep. Barroa's second home run of the young season. The A's win it by a score of five to four. Bill Taylor saved the game with runners on, with a runner on second base in the ninth inning. Athletics win it five four. Lewis the winner, Plunk the loser, Barroa. McGuire hit home run, so did Kevin Mitchell in front of 13,000 plus. Red Sox, A's, fourth inning, no score. Tom Gordon to Mark McGuire. Still plenty of good seats available. I am king of the diamond! Let there be a post-game meal for all my teammates! Second home run of the year. A deep drive. A's up, 2-0. Seventh inning, now tied at two. To Jimmy Williams bringing the lefty to face Jason Giambi. He doesn't. Bro is going. Let there be meats and cheeses for all the teammates! 
two-run bomb off Gordon Jambi's second of the year. The A's up by a count of four to two. Eighth inning, Red Sox, two runners on. Bill Taylor, Tim Nering, follow the hostess. Your table is waiting. Show them what they've won. It's an American League Baseball game, Athletics six to two. Comebacks coming often so far for the A's. They've scored the winning run in the seventh or eighth inning in all their four. The great commissioner in the sky ordered up a sunny showcase afternoon for the World Series champions to open their home season. The New York Yankees, their banner on the largest regular season crowd in the 21 years of the remodeled house originally built by Ruth. Yankees and the A's before the game, lots of emotion and lots of history. Don Mattingly, Joe Torre, and the mayor are lifting that championship banner. A lot of votes there, mayor. And Joe DiMaggio throws out the first pitch. Can't get this anywhere else in baseball. David Cohn. Untouchable. Gets Ken Seiko. Strikes out the side in the first inning. Top six gets Batista for the third time. Gets Scott Brocious for the third time. And that's gets Ken Seiko again. 12 Ks did not allow a run through seven innings. David Stone yanks up one nothing. Mariano Rivera. He's the closer this year. Mark McGuire leading off the ninth. Can you hit a baseball any harder than this? Oh, I don't think so. Hit well. Bernie's looking up and into the batter's eye, 464 feet away. Can you believe that? Nobody else could. We go to extra innings into the 12th with Mayshore on second. Bornegal hits one to left. Witten with a throw in time to get Mayshore, but Joe Girardi drops the ball. With two runs in the top of the 12th inning, the A's for the Yankees home opener. They don't get their rings quite yet. It's being remodeled. The A's win it three to one. In this game, Aaron Small, three hitless relief innings for the victory. Averaging a strikeout in inning, he saved five last year. We mentioned he was primarily a setup man. Straight away center field, hit well. Bernie's looking up, and this game is tied. Gone. Way up in the black seats here at stadium. That got out in a hurry. Mariano won the battle last year. McGuire gets revenge today. His third of the year. And talk about quiet as a crowded elevator. Whew, this crowd got quiet in a hurry. First of a two-game set at Sky Dome. Third inning. Watch the Jays play a little D. Jason Giambi pops it foul. Ed Sprague doesn't give up. I mean, doesn't give up. Into the photographer's well. Might as well have stayed there and shot. Eighth inning, 3-2 Jays. Mark McGuire as a pinch hitter. Takes Tim Crabtree somewhere deep into Ontario. Ties the game at three. Bottom of the ninth man on first. Sean Green hits the double play grounder, but Scott Spezio, a third baseman, play in second. Throws it away. Blue Jays would load the bases, and then Otis Nixon comes to the plate ever so sweetly to right center field. Carlos Delgado scores, and the Jays win it 4-3. to three. Spezio took the blame afterward, saying, I messed up. McGuire was a bit more charitable, saying, the fact is this kid's never played second before and never played on artificial turf. Toronto snaps a three-game skid, and he's in Motown. Bottom of the first, Willie Adams on the mound. Ryan Hunter with a drive deep to left field. There's no need to fear. David Mayshore is here. He's Leaping cash to Rob Hunter of the home run, top of the second. Hieronimo Baroa. And Baroa also means goodbye. <laughs> Golfing that Justin Thompson pitch into the left field seats. Baroa's fifth, one nothing A's. And Big Mac, you are witnessing a Big Mac attack as that ball is crushed. A's go on to win 7-1, getting homers from McGuire and Baroa. Big Mac has 37 career homers against Detroit. That's the most he's hit against any team. Damon to sweep the Tigers. Bottom of the first, two men on for Tony Clark. Deep, and I don't think it's playable, but there'd be a new meaning brought to that phrase in this afternoon. His seventh of the year, 4 nothing Tigers. 5-1 to one Detroit in the sixth. Brian Moore and Mark McGuire. He hit the ball real hard. His news director hit the cameraman real harder. Only the fourth homer completely out of Tiger Stadium on the left side, and you missed it? 491 feet. Ooh. Tigers win 9-2. Brian Moeller's first Major League victory it continues to fascinate baseball historians that only those four guys have homered over the left field roof. And now three of them, Harmon Killebrew, Frank Howard, and McGuire, were visitors. Only Cecil Fielder has ever done it for Detroit. Score Greg Colvin to right center field. Damon Mayshore heading toward the wall, and he makes the catch. Bottom of the fourth, still no score. He's okay. Brad Radke facing Mark McGuire. 
Going on and missed strike three. Radke had a one hitter into the bottom of the sixth. Top of the fifth. Bases loaded. No score. Rod Coomer to right center field. Steinbach would score. Colburn would score. The throw home is not in time to get Matt Lawton. A bases clearing double and the Twins are up three to nothing. Bottom of the sixth. Twins up four nothing now. Mark McGuire. Bingo bango. Straight away center field. 447 feet later. Athletes are their athletes. Athletics are down four to one. Bottom of the seventh. Twins are up five one. Molina chops on the road for this one though in Oakland where you do get sushi although I don't think they sell sake to wash it down and wash down Ariel Prieto after Chuck Knobloch rips this one in the first inning for a homer one nothing twins in a flash but Mark McGuire with the bomb of his own his fourth straight game with a home run and the A's take a 2-1 lead, his eighth of the year. But here is Scott Spezio up with the bases loaded in the fourth. And that is gone. The grand slam for the kids, Scott Spezio. And the A's win 6-1. McGuire is now homered in four straight games. That's one short of the club record held by Dave Kingman. Spezio's grand slam, the first of his career. Knobloch hit his 10th career leadoff homer. He now has reached base safely in all 20 games. Aaron it now three for three wildest game of the night in cleveland a's indians top three three two a's oral not there mark mcguire ay, 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 ay. <laughs> the fans and the bleachers and left bowed to him 485 feet off the budweiser sign <laughs> no, one had, no one had ever hit one there ever manny ramirez in batting practice he tried has never gotten to the scoreboard. Back-to-back -back homers, Justice hit one previously. 6-5 A's lead. Jose! In batting practice, he and McGuire were trying to reach the scoreboard. Nobody came close. 7-6, bottom nine. Tony Fernandez to the gap against Billy Taylor. Fernandez double. This hell scores. It's 7-all. Four batters later, sights are with the bases loaded. Jose, no! If he catches it, runner would have tagged. A's would have gone on top. I should say the Indians would have won it. Instead, he lets it go, and then he gets out of the inning as Brocious makes a nice play, so we're tied at seven. Not anymore! McGuire, again, to center. Eight, seven A's. And he hits the ball, though, and also hold nine miles in this game. Matt Williams at bat. Don Wenger, uh-uh. Double off the wall in an 11-7 game. Just barely missing a grand salami. 11 to 9. Next batter, the red hot Dave Justice. Take a breather. Right now, they walk him. They get to Kevin Mitchell. And Mitch got under it. It's an adventure out there. Young reels it in. And wow, the A's win by a final score of 11 to 9. Mark McGuire goes three for six. Jose Mesa, a third of an inning pitch. Three hits, two earned runs. The loser. Watch the Budweiser sign, fans. Something that's never been done ever here at Jacobs Field, and Mark McGuire just did it. This is the sixth park now. He has had the longest home run ever hit in, in, in the American League. Booker T. Washington once said, do a common thing in an uncommon way. 1996 big league home runs were more common than double plays, but the way Matt Williams has been stroking it this year, he had just one jack the first four weeks of the season, six in the last seven days. How about Mark McGuire's uncommon two homers last night? Together, no lie, they traveled almost a fifth of a mile. 
That's why they are our peak performers. Learning all over again is fun too. You know, I have to learn the pitching and I have to learn the league and it's like first day of school all over again. Pitch of all time for Matt Williams. Matt Williams has been stooling American League pitchers with mighty homers. So it's up to Williams. Six of them this past week while driving in 14. An RBI total that equals a certain ex-Indians production for all of April. The third baseman's 25 RBI this past month leads Cleveland and puts to rest thoughts of an adjustment period after eight plus years in the National League. My approach is simple though. When it comes over that white thing we call the plate, I'm going to take a whack at it. Speaking of whack, Okay, there's a drive. Uh, when I came in the dugout, guys said hit the hit the back wall or the foot wise or something, something like that. Up and out. Off the scoreboard. That homer, along with McGuire's 459-footer in the 10th inning Wednesday, gave him about 944 feet worth of dingers in one night. Then again, most of McGuire's 11 April home runs were of a lengthy variety. Just ask the Yankees' Mariano Rivera. Way up in the black seats here at Stadium. That got out in a hurry. Or the cameraman in Detroit, April 20th. 491 feet completely out of Tiger Stadium and left. People think home runs are so easy. It's not. It's the hardest thing to do in, in any sport. You know, there's a pitcher out there trying to get you out. And being a power hitter, you know, you don't see many pitches to hit where you can drive. You know, the pitch is a slider. And uh, uh, I just hit it, I hit it squarely. This Monday's slice of the game comes in nearly 500-foot slices, courtesy of Mark McGuire. In the grand tradition of Frank Howard and Dave Kong Kingman, McGuire not only produces a plethora of power, his pokes are prodigious. Chris Berman chronicles Max Might in our slice of the game. There's a pitcher out there trying to get you out, and being a power hitter, you, you, you know, you don't see many pitches to hit where you can drive, and uh, you, so you have to battle every right back. Mark Eve of Destruction McGuire, the king of the Bay City Bashers. Mark McGuire not only hits home runs, he crushes them. McGuire's 11 home runs this year total a distance of 4,637 feet, an average of over 421 feet per home run. For his career, McGuire has hit the longest home runs in six American League ballparks. Tiger Stadium, 447 feet out of the roof. Uh-oh. Kaminsky Park, 470 feet over the bleacher. There it goes! Look out in the Mississippi. Wow, what a shot! Look at that, right to the top of the lower stands. The Metrodome, 475 feet. Mark McGuire launches one deep to left field. This one is going and going into the upper deck one more time. That the Kingdom, 481 feet. Swung on, belted to left, way back. How far will it go? Oh, it almost hit the scoreboard in left. Up Jacobs Field, shot. measured at 485 feet. Especially where you hit in left center, that's at least 550. I mean, that's, I don't know who the, I'll call him an idiot if he was here. The idiot who said it was only 485. I mean, that's, that, that's taking a lot away from that. And now he just pounds one to left field. That is in the fifth deck. And finally, it's Skydo. 488 feet and into the fifth deck. What's left for the biggest basher of them all? What possible target is next for one of McGuire's prodigious blasts? Could this be the year McGuire breaks Roger Maris's mark of 61 home runs? McGuire's 11 homers in April is an Oakland record, and McGuire isn't usually a hot starter. McGuire homers about once every 11 at bats over the first three months of the season during his career, then loses some steam in the summer and picks it up again in September. His home run ratio is increasing, but he hasn't had 500 at bats since 1990. Slice of the Game is brought to you by Pizza Hut, making it great again and again. Mark McGuire, one of the parts where he has not hit the longest home run there, County Stadium. Jose Valentin's been out of the lineup for almost a month. 
gets a bases loaded situation and Dave Tailgater ensures that he will not finish the fifth inning. A bases clearing double Brewers with a big 7-3 lead. There's the bomb. Mark McGuire off Bob Wickman in the seventh. It's a solo shot though and it's still 8-4. That's McGuire's 12th of the year, but they're not done. Wickman's still in there. He's been very effective for the Brewers this year, but not in the seventh inning tonight. Matt Stairs, pinch hitting, knocks his Fizio and Giambi, suddenly it's a one-run game. Bottom of the seventh, Matt Nieski on first, the one. Mark Aker out of relief, and Ice. Ice is the game. Gerald Williams with a two-run blast. The Bujas go on to win it 11-7. They're the only team in the Central Division with a winning record for the back at first. And only the fifth American League team to post a winning record. Only four had winning records to the end of the day. And Scott Carr gets his first win of the year. Mark McGuire, 6'5", 240. That's the guy, all right. The super slugger for the Oakland A's. Mark doesn't just hit home runs often, he hits them far. So far, they inspire awe. What a shot! Where did that ball go? It disappeared. He didn't even get all of that. And it got out of here to hurt. All he's got to do is put the bat on the ball, Ray. Oh, and it goes out. And people out there think, well, God, you know, home runs might be really easy. It's not. It's probably the hardest thing to do in sports today. How hard can it be? Mark already owns the longest home runs ever hit in five Major League Parks. Uh-oh. And that is a fair ball. Out on the concourse. A two-run homer for McGuire. He got a breaking ball, a hanger. And look how far he hits it. Oh, my goodness. That's scary. And now he just pounds one to left field. That is in the fifth deck. Bet you folks didn't think you'd get a souvenir up there. A monstrous blast. Some guy in Calgary just found it in his backyard. Mark McGuire has just reached the upper deck in left field with a long home run. That might be the longest here at the Kingdom. His longest ever in Detroit made Mark just the fourth player ever to hit a ball to left out of Tiger Stadium. And his most recent conquest came in Cleveland. Oh, Mark McGuire. I think he got a lot of this one, Ray. What do you think? Where is it going to land? Hit the side? Strange seven game losing streak. Cal Aldridge has allowed three homers this year. Bottom of the third, one nothing A's. We say this for a reason. Jose Canseco makes it four. Allowed by Cal Aldridge this season, two nothing A's. The next batter. Mark McGuire, you got it. 410 feet away to center field. That makes it five homers allowed by Aldridge this year. Three nothing A's. In the next inning, Matt Stead. He swings hard early in the count. Make it six on the season. That thing was hanging. 5-0 A's, a two-run shot. The very next batter, Jose Canseco. Back-to-back -back jobbies, you bet. See ya. Gone. Eldred allowed four homers in this game, one more than he allowed all year up to this point. 6-0 A's at that point. The A's go on to win, 7-4. So Canseco and Stairs each homered, while Canseco and Maguire go back-to-back -back yard for the 10th time in their careers. McGuire's 13th homer of the year snapped a 25 at bat homerless streak that was his longest such drought since 94. Ariel Prieto with the win. He allowed two runs and six hits before leaving after six and the third innings with mild back spasms. He's in high eight. The A's just 11 and 20 on the road visiting Toronto. A's down 3 1, two men on for that man. Jose Consego against Pat Henkin. And Jose is sky dancing. His 12th of the year, and the A's would be up by one, 4 3. Same four, bottom nine, Orlando Merced facing Mike Moeller. Merced, the fly, Jason McDonald. It is his first major league game, so we're going to give him some slack. Now that is a highlight. Can we take another look? We want to give him enough vision. It is his first major league game, and he does a wonderful juggling act. And I think that will make night lights on the 6.30 Eastern edition tomorrow. 
That is four straight losses now for Toronto. As for Jose's game-winning home run, it was the 32nd home run in his career against the Blue Jays. That matches his highest total against any team. Canseco also has 32 dingers against the Yankees. Oh, by the way, speaking of the Yanks, the New York Post reports the Yanks are looking into the availability of Joe Carter. The Yanks are desperate for right-handed power. Family of Mike Ellinger, who's with the Sox. Tyler at Children's Hospital. Can't wait to see you guys out the ballpark. McGuire grounded a shortstop his first time up. Fastball, he threw it by him. Ooh, late movement there by Danny Darwin, sinking for strike one. McGuire, 13 homers, 29 driven in. Actually, give him 30 now if they gave him that double. Turn this fastball around right here. High towering drive. Tailing right into his bail a little bit. Yeah, great. he knew it. Hey, well, he has great head position at the oh, plate. Yeah. Virtually no head movement. Oh, he got all of that one. He cleared that front side so nicely. Watch the head movement or lack of it right here from McGuire. Boy, you put that little box around the head and never move out yeah. of there. One of the things he does so well. So that'll bring up Scott Spezio. Scott flied to left his first time up. Spezio, big second baseman, pressing out at 210 pounds. Done a great job for these guys so far in the season. There's a drive hit deep to right field. They look up, and it's out of here. Boy, he dropped the hit on a fastball and crushes it to right field. Man, that got out of here in a heartbeat. That's his sixth homer. He now has driven in 20. Oakland as we take a look at the replay. A little bit of a leg kick right there. He's a good low ball hitter. Hudson just dropped the head. It's down and in. And that got out of here quickly. Over that 367 sign. So Dave Magadan takes strike one. This all happened after two were out. McGuire the solo homer. Baroja the single and the two-run shot by Spezio. Getting congratulations from his teammates. There's a grounder towards Ray Durham. He'll throw him out. But some two-out thunder by Oakland. They put three on the board. And after four, it's 3-1-8. Go. See. In only 13 games, should say in the month of May. Danny Darwin, Mark McGuire, look out. Home run number 14. Traveled over 400 feet. We're tied at Uno. The A is getting it done on D. Scott Spezio dives, gets E and grounder in the top second. It's 3 1. Ray Durham down the line and left. Fair. Two batters later, two on for the big hurt. He bloops a single to right. It scores Durham and Mike Cameron. Thomas advanced on the throw. We're scored and tied at three. Thomas coming up big, H. This is tremendous at bat right there. He fouled off a couple pitches and got what he wanted. Fox up 7-6, one down, he's threatening. Well, Karkovites know one of the best arms in the game. 
I don't know if he got him, but they called him now. Roberto Hernandez, Jason Giambi, gone fishing. White Sox hang on to the win 7-6. Thomas, last 20 games, 20 runs, 20 RBIs. Baines, a pair of doubles in this one as the White Sox keep the A's by one. You can see by Tewksbury's reaction, he's kind of following the ball. Here is Jose Canseco. A single in the first, he got as far as second base. The A's reacquiring Conseco from the Boston Red Sox. John Wasden going to the Red Sox. And Conseco, after having been a designated hitter for so many years, is seeing more action in the outfield tonight. His 27th game in the outfield. Now, David, I know you spent uh, the latter end of your career as a DH, and I'm not sure how much going back and forth you did toward the end. Not much when you were a twin, I know. Not much. Uh, it's got to be hard on him because you just prepare for a game totally different as a DH as you do as an outfielder. You've got to get the feel of uh, chasing the ball and the, the terrain out there. I, I don't know how he's done this year, but I know it's got to be difficult, to, certainly the first half of the season. Well, he's hit the home run. He's got 10 home runs, 31 RBIs, but the average at 250, Two strikes to Conseco. And a delay called by Derwood Merrill, and Conseco is rung up. That's why a catcher will hold it, as Steinbach did there. Well, in his first at bat, and Conseco's just been called out. Ron Washington and Art Howe couldn't get there quick enough. In his first at bat, Jose Conseco looked back at Derwood Merrill about a fastball in. course has to be careful or he'll be the next to go. Well the umpires have gotten their fuses a little bit too short. Used to be able to argue a little bit about those without getting thrown out. It seemed to be a little uncalled for. I, would, I was just going to say people really like to come to a game to see Jose Canseco play and participate. And you just don't throw guys out. Yeah, like he's, he's one of the stars of the game, and you sure don't. Well, he hit his head there. <laughs> <laughs> Take that helmet. Take it. Helmet's full. Well, now the A's are in somewhat of a dilemma. They lose their right fielder. Well, Tewksbury with good control, but he, I mean, as a pitcher, I would have liked that, but maybe a little bit low. You see Durwood really taking a little bit second to call that. And you saw Steinbach, as they say, frame it and hold it. A big strikeout of Conseco. He exits the game. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Duck. 1-0 to Mark McGuire. McGuire singled in the first inning. A very high fly to deep center field. Darren Jackson looks up. And this one is long gone to center field. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. McGuire nearly equaling in height what he got in distance on that home run. His 16th of the year, and it's 3 to nothing, Oakland. Well, I saw something where they said the average home run that he hit is averaging about 430 feet. And again, it just watch this swing of Mark McGuire. Just a fastball, middle of the plate, a little away. Belt high. Last year, he hit the longest home run hit in this ballpark to left field. That might be the longest home run hit here to center field. And of course, earlier this year, he became just the fourth man to clear the roof in left field at Tiger Stadium and hit one high up on the scoreboard at Jacobs Field in Cleveland. One strike to Matt Stairs. And now two strikes. Gee. Wow. <laughs> That's a long way. You know, there's still a little juice in the ball, but did, did you see Mark McGuire's arms and legs oh. before the game? The World Wrestling Federation, they got nothing. <laughs> yeah, I know where he's going when he finishes playing. He's pumped. 
One and two to Matt Stairs. One away in the top of the third inning. Oakland leading three to nothing. Close pitch, two and two. Well, they measured that home run at 462 feet. Stairs with a swing and a miss. And Tewksbury gets his fourth strikeout. Home run measured at 462 feet on the MCI long distance shot. Two away in the third. And Scott Spezio. Royals, bottom of the fourth, no score, two down. Mike Oquist against Craig Paquette. This is deep to right. Jose Canseco is in pursuit, which means there's likely to be trouble. Paquette racing around as the ball gets away. He's going for an inside the park home run. And naturally, he makes it. That's what everybody does these days. 2 nothing Royals. Top of the ninth, still 2 nothing, one out. Mark McGuire with a two-run shot off of Hippolito Pichardo. And we are tied at two. And we're going for a while. Bottom nine, three, two Royals. Nobody. Billy Taylor facing Scott Cooper, deep to right. Actually, it was three two A's, and that tied the game at three three. Top ten, game still tied. Jeff Montgomery facing Canseco. That's a double down the line. Five three A's. Bottom ten, A's up eight six. Royals threatening. Dave Johnson gets Jose Offerman looking to end it. And the A's do hang on for an 8-6 victory. Most of the season after undergoing elbow surgery on Tuesday, knuckleballer Dennis Springer went after his fourth straight win in Oakland, simultaneously trying to snap the team's three-game losing streak. Dennis Springer had already surrendered a tater to Mark McGuire. Didn't learn his lesson. Knuckleball fisted. His 19th of the year, second of the game, Oakland breaks the five-all tie in the fifth. But the Angels batted him back. They're up 9-6 when... Gary D. Sarcina robbed oh, Ronimo Baroja from his knees to end the threat in the seventh. The ninth, two on, two out, and all. Dane Johnson pitching. Jim Larris lifts his leg, lifts it into right field. Baroja wobbled it. A huge drop because Dave Hollins and Tim Salmon come around to score. They score five times in the ninth. They also had a four-run seventh. A wild game in Oakland as the Angels we're out to snap that three-game losing streak. The A's have not won three straight games all year. They've had seven two-game win streaks. Damon all Majore that's going Majore. Scores. Tommy's 11 double, one nothing A's. Third inning. Boom! Mark Eva destruction McGuire. Back, 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 back. Home run number 20. Five nothing A's. Next up. Geronimo! It's Baroa. His 12. It's gone. Stairs also homered for Oakland. And uh, the A's going to belt the Blue Jays by the count of 8-2. to two is Mike Oakland. on the jaw with a line drive off the bat of Julio Franco. He would miss almost a month. Well, he makes his return tonight. And this will scare the Blair out of you. Right back and almost, almost low enough to get him again. But the Giambi liner is a single in the center. This one is off the bat of Jason Giambi. A's up 7-5. The 2 one pitch. McGuire. Mark McGuire hits home runs. They're better. McGuire is 22nd on the year. Tiger starters have been good, but their bullpen's been a minefield. They got tattooed again today. Tigers within one at 9 eight. Dane Johnson, Travis Simon, and he pops out. Nice catch out there by Stairs. A's hang on and win 9-8. McGuire, 22 ding-dongs is our house. When you talk about him getting into a groove, it's a home run groove. For everyone else, it's a base hit groove. 40 of McGuire's 351 career homers have come against the Tigers. Split among more than one team. So if Mark McGuire really does get swapped, he's more than halfway there. 23 of them as he went through the turnstiles at Sky Dome Sunday afternoon. Here's the dentist's son in the third at Toronto. Passed and ye shall receive. That would be his 24th of the year off Louis Andahar. 50 runs batted in, and the A's are leading the Jays 2 to nothing. All this for Don Wengert. It's Don Wengert to not Don Wager. Otis Nixon. <laughs> Frozen pizza, frozen defendant. Wanger to no-hitter through five, which tells you that he didn't keep it. A's up 4 nothing in the fourth. Geronimo Baroja means goodbye. That's deep, and I don't think that's playable. Nine hits, seven runs allowed by Andujar in just four. 
13 homers for Barroa this year. Jays are down 7-2 in the sixth. Base is loaded. Aaron Let's get small. Gets Alex Gonzalez. Ninth inning. Jays down 7-5. Base is loaded. Billy Taylor gets Alex Gonzalez. He was 0-5 for for with 3 Ks and left the bases five. loaded twice. Still, that was not one of Taylor's better saves. Gave up an RBI single to... Art Howe looking on for the A's first three-game winning streak. Top of the second, nobody out. Mark McGuire at third. Jose Canseco takes a Will Canane pitch over the fence in center field and off the palm tree. His 14th. Yeah, 2-0 A's. Top of the third, 2-1 A's. Two outs and a runner on. The other Bash brother hits his 26th to get it within one of Griffey. It's 4-1 Athletics, but he missed the palm tree. Next hitter, Canseco. Crushes another one. His second of the game. The A's go up by a 5-1 to one count. Bottom of the sixth, 5-3 athletic Steve Finley with the base hit. The score, Chris Jones and send Caminiti to third. 5-4 A's. Caminiti, though, pulls up at third lame. Has to leave the game with a mild strain of the hamstring. Top of the eighth. Game tied at eight. One on, two out. Jason McDonald. Woo! His first major league home run off Trevor Hoffman, 10-8 Athletics. And in the bottom of the ninth, the 11-9, the Padres load him up with two outs. Finley against Buddy Groom, the pop fly ends the game. The Athletics win a wild one, 11-9 in San Diego. Canada allowed five runs. Not get a good throw back into a shortstop and no play at the plate. McGuire jumps on the first one, hits it very high and deep to right center. Buner, does he have room for it? Ball's off the wall. Baroa comes around and scores. McGuire doubles in another run, and the A's lead two to nothing. A single followed by consecutive doubles, and the A's have already scored twice against Randy. First pitch fastball swinging by McGuire. And you talk about somebody providing the power. Johnson does. McGuire just gets a good swing on it. And just cuts, keeps going and going. Buhner went all the way to the wall, played it perfectly, but still could not get the runner at the plate. And wall out there in right field, 23 feet high. Otherwise, McGuire would have had his 27th home run. It is only eight feet six inches in other parts of the ballpark. That had to be upwards of uh, upper 90s there. A little extra on that pitch. Canseco fouls it sharply into the uh, first base seats. Nothing in two on Jose. That last one 97 miles per hour. They had a 4.6 earthquake yesterday around the Puget Sound region. Nobody was injured, no real damage. But, uh, and Seiko and McGuire doing uh, some potential damage at 97 miles an hour. Not this time. Randy strikes out another. He has recorded eight outs in the game, seven via strikeout. Again, a little extra up. Very tough to catch up to. Impossible. It's out of the strike zone. You commit to a pitch like that, you have no chance. His career. The Rocket Man's in trouble if this continues. I mean, he is just rearing back and throwing. I mean, sliders, fastballs, and a little bit upset on top of it. All right, we need one more. By the blue, Dave Stewart. Todd Stottlemyre. Oh, okay. Wow. Just barely got in. Stewart has barely got in. Light of blue at 301 strikeouts. That's a big year. Randy struck out 308 in 1993. That's the most that he has ever struck out in one year. Mark McGuire with a shot right <laughs> off the facing of the top deck and about seven feet from Bill King's head. Oh, man. And you didn't, you wouldn't have enough time to react to it either. There was no holy Toledo there. <laughs> holy. <laughs> but not Toledo. Yeah, a shorter word. Wow. Randy a little upset that he missed there. Randy Johnson struck out two in the first. He struck out the sides in the second and third. He struck out two more in the fourth, and he has struck out the first two here in the fifth. So 
run at 97 miles per hour in the fifth inning. I think his back's all right. Don't you, Ray? I think so. Three and one. Last year, Randy Johnson had an irritated nerve in the lower back in mid-May. Was on the DL. Came back in August to pitch out of the bullpen, and then finally shut it down in mid-September. Matt got a piece. He's still alive there. Prematurely celebrating another strikeout. One thing I did notice with Randy Johnson when he gets the rosin back, he doesn't bend over. He stoops down like in a deep knee bend. So he is careful with his back. Oh, McGuire. What a shot. Mark McGuire has done it. He has teed off on Randy Johnson <laughs> and destroyed the baseball. <laughs> That's a 6.9. Randy, did you say 104? Registered 104 on the gun, and it went up about 120. That went halfway up the second deck, didn't it? Yes. We've all waited for that yep. moment when baseball's most powerful thrower met with baseball's most powerful swinger. What would be the result? Well, here it is. And man, I tell you, we can say we saw it. Can't believe it. One of the longest home runs. The fans are just seeing it in Kingdom history. 538 <laughs> feet. <laughs> Randy's upset. I don't know. 538 I'm, feet. I don't know that I'd want to be Ken Seiko. What was Galarraga's? 529. It was 529 right. or thereabouts at Joe Robbie Stadium. Well, McGuire's probably upset they took 50 feet away in Cleveland today. From the shot he hit off the scoreboard. Jose on 3-0 off the glove of Russ Davis down the line. Jose's going to second on Jose Cruz Jr. and he's in there with a double. <laughs> so let him pile up the strikeouts, Ray. The A's lead three to nothing. Canseco telling Brad Fisher, oh, just a little, little double down the line. That's a tough act to follow in McGuire. Big unit shaking his head. I don't blame you, Randy. Canseco getting low fastball and just keeping it on the ground. Russ Davis, diving effort, no chance. That ball was past him. Boy, they were so quick with the 538 feet. And I don't dispute this one. The one at Tiger Stadium you wondered about. It was upgraded to 514. There's no way the shot in Cleveland was 434 feet. You're never going to convince me of that. And this one may be the most gargantuan of all, Ray. What a tremendous... There it is. Let's take a look at that. Look at that. He released the top pin. Randy knew it was gone, just a matter of how far. The tenth ball to be hit in that second level. McGuire has hit three. And the longest, of course. Patrick Lennon back live strikes out. So Randy Johnson struck out the side. But it was Mark McGuire who struck back. 538 feet later. On the next cheap seats, a competition so start. For a 090 or visit us at tdwaterhouse.com slash tv1. There's nothing quite like it in all of sports. I guess football has the 99-yard touchdown run and basketball has the shot from the baseline all the way in, Ray, but 538 feet. Mark McGuire, the third time he has hit a ball into the second deck in this ballpark, and this one will be remembered forever. He did it in the same inning last year when he hit the two home runs, six runs batted in, grand slam, of course, in the same inning. Well, Steve Carsey is going to have a hard time even getting a headline. All right, the 3 2 pitch to McGuire. Swing and a high fly ball belted. And I mean belted deep to left field into the upper deck. My, oh my, what a shot by McGuire. That 
is probably the longest home run ever hit here. Dave Niehaus can take you to a game like nobody else. I, I moved from there, and I used to listen to the M's games on the radio. Great call. Deservedly so. McGuire shot yeah. 538 feet. Coming up on CNN Inside, we will hear from Big Mac about that shot against Randy Johnson. Again, Johnson, 19 Ks. Almost baseball history. More on that coming up. No doubt about it. That'll do it for us right now, but there's more than everything by Randy Johnson. To borrow the chorus line from the 1970s hit, Oh yes, they call them the streak, fastest thing on two feet. A lot of streakers in the A's Mariners tilt. Oakland's Jason Jombi on a 25-game hitting streak. M streaking for a sixth straight win. Russ Davis on a 12-game hitting streak. And Randy Johnson, who lost the major strikeout lead when David Cohn caged 16 Monday night, streaking for his seventh win in seven starts. If you're expecting a bunch of naked ball players, shame on you. It's a family network. Oh, Randy Johnson, 1,800, 28 career strikeouts. The A's going. First inning, Jason McDonald got waxed. He was 0 for 5. Mark McGuire got played. Jose Canseco, big old mighty nothing. He struck out three times. You got to call Randy Johnson bus driver because he was taking the A's to school. The guy with four AL strikeout titles had five Ks through two innings, and he was tight. Third inning, Jason McDonald, number six. A's up one zip on a Geronimo Bro, a double. Mark McGuire, only three career hits lifetime against big unit. Hardcore double off the wall in right center. It scores Barrow, a Big Mac's 15th double of the year. Two zip A's. Very next batter, Jose Canseco. You ain't got to go home, Jose, but you got to get up out of here. Patrick Lennon swinging. Big unit, plenty of K's in the night, plenty of time to school you on some stats, like. He struck out 10 or more batters 76 times in his career. This was the 76th game. This was the eighth time this year he's had 10 or more. Everybody going down. Bornegal, Baroa, everyone. Big whip. Next batter, though. What happens when a 97-mile-per-hour fastball by Johnson comes in and leaves the bat of Mark McGuire? Big old fat mojo! It left the bat at 104 miles per hour. 538 feet later, the second longest home run ever, longest home run ever hit at the King Dome in 21 years. After Johnson struck out Patrick Lennon, Scott Grosius goes down. 14 strikeouts for Johnson. In the sixth inning, Mark Bellhorn. Take a seat, kid. 15 Ks through six. Johnson treating everybody like dogs. Looking, Canseco swinging, Patrick Lennon, sit, stay. He had 18 strikeouts through eight innings. That tied a personal career high. Ninth inning, 3-2 pitch to Scott Groshes. No out. Groshes, deep to center. Ken Griffey, the six-time gold glover, has it. Johnson still tie the major league record of 20 strikeouts in one game. Bellhorn looking, he's 1K away, but Jason McDonald with two outs, flies out to right. 19 Ks for Johnson, his best ever butt, big butt. Randy Johnson loses the game to the A's 4-1. to one. His 19 strikeouts, an American League record for nine inning big league mark held by Roger Clemens, who did it twice, but Johnson lost for only the fourth time in the last two and a half years. He becomes the fifth pitcher in history to strike out 19. Of his gargantuan 538-foot homer off of Johnson, McGuire uttered, he, meaning Johnson, supplies the power. It's just a nice, easy swing for me. Come on, Mark, you're 6'5", 240, nothing easy about it. Russ Davis hitting streak intact at 13. Jason Jami didn't play, so his 25-game streak's still alive. But the man, even in losing, was Randy Johnson. The most intimidating thing a pitcher can do does not all... 5,280 feet is a mile. 538 feet is slightly better than one-tenth of a mile. Mark McGuire hit a baseball better than one-tenth of a mile? Big Mac's fatter than fat blast off big unit at the Kingdom this week gave him dibs on the longest jacks ever in four different ballparks. Call out Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith because according to Jose Canseco, Max an alien who came back to show us how to play. A's hosting Texas, Mark McGuire phone home. Bases loaded, facing Julio Santana. Can the congregation say, well, deep to left. 28th homer of the year, McGuire's ninth career grand slam. A's up four zip. Top two, Ariel Prieto cruising, gets Dean Palmer swinging in air. Dean struck out twice in the game. Bottom five, Jose Canseco at the plate. 
Jose rips it to right center, but Damon Buford gets under it and Rob can take with extra bases. Jose 0 for 3. Take another look. Damon making up himself for an 0 for 2 night at the plate. Top four. Will Clark at the plate. He was on the the thrill is gone. Last year. We have to strike out four. The A's win it 6-3. Big Mac's ninth career slam is an Oakland record, but ties a franchise record. Remember, the team was in Philly and Kansas City before settling in. Mark McGuire up second in the inning. And of course, last Tuesday against Randy Johnson, he hit one of the longest home runs anybody'd ever seen. The 3 2 pitch to McGuire. Swing and a high fly ball belted. And I mean belted deep to left field into the upper deck. My, oh my, what a shot by McGuire. And that's, <laughs> that's the great long time voice of the Seattle Mariners on his radio call, Dave Niehaus. And it was uh, breathtaking, the history of the two franchises. The two ball clubs will meet in the regular season this Wednesday afternoon and Thursday night over in San Francisco. The A's and the Giants will have at it with the next go-round of interleague play. We'll see McGuire step over across the bay and, and Ken Seiko. And uh, Joe, the uh, interleague play certainly did provoke a lot of interest, a lot of talk around the country in the first go-round. Well, the Mass League fans who got a chance to see Mark McGuire and the American League fans who got a chance to see the Barry Bonds of the world. I think they were all excited. In fact, last year, Barry Bonds and Mark McGuire were two finalists in the home run hitting contest at the All-Star Game at Home Run Derby. Bonds beat him out. Well, speaking of Home Run Derby, I'm anxious to see McGuire and Vinceco take their cuts at Coors Field in Denver. Now, that won't happen until the end of August. And, of course, the question will be, will McGuire still be with Oakland by then? Well, here he is. He's with the Athletics today, facing the veteran. Hill. he hits a Shot deep to left field. Greer back at the wall. He watches it go. Number 29 for Mark McGuire. McGuire with his 29th homer, his 62nd run battered in. And the fence kind of cuts out pretty quickly there. That's straightaway left, but 367 feet away. Well, they were trying, they've been getting out with fastball this weekend. This fastball is supposed to be away. It's about the middle of the plate, belt high, just where he likes it. And he hits the ball out. He likes the ball down. And he hits it right over the Raleigh Fingers. Retired jersey sign. It's not a good pitch from Ken Hill. You see that 367 marker. Now, that ball was hit about eight miles high. Well, here's Ken Cinco. And he throws him a slider in the first pitch. And it's Brought to you by Olympic Stain. Get everything you need to protect and beautify your deck from Olympic. America's number one selling exterior stain. Mark Eve of Destruction McGuire. Hits him farther than anyone. Can he hit him against the Rangers? Rangers and A's, Sunday night game of the week at the top of the hour. Juiced baseballs, loaded bats, none of this matters when you enter a discussion about Mark McGuire's home run hitting prowess. When was the last time you saw him cheated on a dinger? Certainly not Tuesday night of Randy Johnson, but the man who hits them out of Yellowstone Park could soon be out of the Bay Area. Here's Melissa Stark. Twelve consecutive years is a long time to be with one franchise. For Mark McGuire in Oakland, it's a record. But with the A's headed for their fifth straight losing season, McGuire's last five years have felt even longer. See all these gray hairs in my goatee? <laughs> Nobody likes to lose. Nobody likes to know that your va vacation, you can make the plan starting in August. Which is precisely why the A's slugger is keeping his options open. People are assuming because we're in last place and uh, uh, because I haven't signed an extension with Oakland that I'm available. Well, sure, I am available. Uh, has Sandy Allison come to me and talked to me? No, he hasn't. No, I've not had any direct conversations with Mark. I felt that uh, until something significant came up that uh, we probably should not have those discussions. But I'm in a nice position. Nothing's going to creep up on me, and they're not going to pull me in office and say, hey, you're traded today. That's because as a player who's been in the major league for 10 years... Bring a high fly ball! and with the same team for five. And I mean belted! McGuire can veto any trade the A's present to him. What a shot by McGuire! Which puts him in control. Is finishing your career here really important to you? Um, it's attractive to me. 
But then again, I look at the other side where a lot of great players have played for several teams. Do you want to be traded? Uh, that's a tough question. Double-edged sword, you know. Um, I want to be competitive. I want to be on a team that's competitive. Even if McGuire is traded to a contender this season, he's made it very clear that he still intends to test the free agent market. At that time, another factor will influence his decision. The most important thing for McGuire will be to play near his nine-year-old son, Matt, who lives with his ex-wife in Orange County, California. But if we're talking at the end of the year free agent-wise, Obviously, Southern California is going to be somewhere in Southern California will be high priority on my list. When I'm with my son, it's, it's, he's the joy of my life, and you know I want to be with him. Now, of course, he lives in Southern California. I mean, I know I've lived 11 years, an hour flight away from him, but he's getting to that age right now where you know I like to be around him a lot more than I am. If it's to take a few extra dollars less than what the going rate is to to be next to my son, I'll probably do it. As a free agent, the going rate for McGuire could be $10 million, which puts the small market A's at a disadvantage. We're between a rock and a hard place. Realistically, I think, you know, certainly we have a payroll uh, this year that's roughly $20 million. Um, arguably, um, whatever portion of that it took to re-sign McGuire, we could, we could allocate to Mark and uh, use the rest on the rest of our team. Now, is that realistic? Uh, no, not necessarily. If we come to that point where we feel we we really can't afford to re-sign him financially, then it's probably best for this organization to do something as far as moving him because you wouldn't want to lose him and not get anything for him. Complicating matters even further is the possibility that McGuire could break Roger Maris's home run record this year. I think it's going to be devastating. Um, if Mark McGuire is traded and he does break the home run record, uh, I think Mark is probably the biggest biggest thing that Oakland Ames has right now in the sense of uh, bringing fans out to the ballpark. I was there last year trying to chase what people are always trying to chase. Nobody came out to watch this last year. There are a lot of fans who would think 60 home runs notwithstanding, uh, we need to bring in some new talent into the organization in the way of prospects. Uh, others would say um, exactly the opposite. Well, we all saw the moonshot by McGuire at Seattle off Randy Johnson when he hit it in the sweet spot off a of Randy Johnson fastball 540 feet. This surpasses this 480 foot class in Minnesota and one at Toronto and 470 in California and Chicago and umpteen others 450 or more. That being said, do those glass stay in Oakland as the contract runs out? Does he get traded this year like they just did Baroa? Or do they have to wait to see if he makes the run? I think they have to wait to see what happens. I think there are a lot of practicalities to say he is going to stay in Oakland. I mean, first, look at the teams that would want him and could afford to give something out. Florida's not going to give them a, a center fielder like Mark Kotze because at the end of the year, Florida has no idea what his payroll situation is. They get rid of their great young players and then are told to slap their payroll by $20, $20 million, or well, then they're really sunk. So Lewis is not going to give up Morris. Might be the best young pitcher in the National League. So that's... You know, that's not going to happen with the Cardinals. And I think the problem is, for them to get two or three really good young players today is very tough because clubs trade for a guy who's going to make $10 million. They're saying, wait a minute. I mean, <laughs> that, that could be one quarter of our payroll, and we have to keep every young player we can. If we're going to have a quarter of our payroll, half our payroll tied up in one or two players, we have to have a lot of good young players. It's, it's coming from both sides, and the A's are really squeezed. Well, the A's are squeezed, but when you go out to the park to see the A's, you just want to see McGuire take BP and take his, his wax. The A's... Four years ago, Segway, Carsey on the mound looking for a second straight win, getting some help early, facing Pudge Rodriguez. This out was laced. The liner, Matt Stairs, known for his bat, ducks, and gets it. Mark McGuire, bottom of the second. A's down one nothing gone. 29th on the year. This one off Ken Hill and we're tied at one. Rangers were up 4-2 in the seventh when Juan Gonzalez came to the plate against Carlos Reyes. 17th on the year. The Rangers appeared to be cruising 5-2 for the A's. Rally in the eighth at the expense of John Wetland in to face Dave Magadan. Magadan with Texas leading 5-4. Base hit brings in Damon Mayshore. Game tied at five. Next batter the Rangers bring in the infield against Mark Bellhorn. Bellhorn got enough of it. The little flare down the line. Scott Spezio scores. And the A's would win it. A very emotional night. Very emotional. 
I get emotional just thinking about it. Seven to five. Jason Giambi, two for three. He has now reached base in 37 straight games. Carse, five innings, seven hits, four runs, but was not... Nine, the last time the Giants and A's met. Made life easy for them tonight. It's a ground ball to the right side, steered by Phillips. Flips Eckersley. Yes, he's there in time, and the A's are the world champions. This A's Giants game with a little less on the line, but still counts. Bottom three. Jose Vizcaino. Nice bunt. Scott Broches. I got no time for no glove. Broches, a 205 hitter, was also two of five hitting on the night. Top five, two men on. Mark McGuire. Big red piece. We'll see you. Three run shot. 30th of the year. 359th of his career. He's hitting a home run every 9.5 at bats. Best in the bigs. Two batters and one pitcher later. Scott Bro Scott Spezio off the hook. Dan Carlson deep to right for his eighth home run, a two-run shot. A's up 7-1. A's relievers getting it done. Barry Bonds, Bonds, Barry Bonds, shaken, stood, and out. Bonds struck out twice. The A's bullpen, five innings pitch, two hits, four Ks. Oaktown wins it 8-1. The first game between the two teams since the earthquake interrupted the 89 World Series. Big Max, 359th dinger, tied him with Johnny Mize for 43rd on the all-time list. The humble McGuire said... It was a golf swing that would have been a shank. Home came against Seattle 20 years ago. The resurgent Rangers battling the A's. Found with the first no score. Runners on first and third. Juan Gonzalez rips one to third. Scott Brocious, a nice diving stop. And the put on at first, but Mark McLemore scores. It's 1-0 Texas. Bottom of the third, still 1-0. Gonzalez going deep off Don Wengert. 19th of the season, his third home run in four lifetime at-bats against Wenger. Rangers lead 3-0. Top of the seventh, it's 6-0. Bobby Witt cruising, but not for long. Mark McGuire going very deep, breaking up the shutout with his 31st homer of the season. More on that titanic blast momentarily. 6-1 Texas, bottom of the seventh, same score, one on. Gonzalez going deep to center off Carlos Reyes. A two-run shot, his second homer of the game. Texas goes on to win it, picking up their fourth straight win, 8-1 to one the final. Gonzalez, the big hitting star, 6 RBI. As for McGuire, that homer measured at 449 feet, the second longest in the Only if Mark McGuire struggles. Uh, it's almost as if everything else has been an appetizer here, Joe, because here he is, Mark McGuire. 52 home runs last year. 31 home runs here at the break this year and a man who already in his career has 360 home runs he just came in as a rookie in 1987 he's already at 360 as we well know everyone who's gotten to 400 home runs who is eligible for the hall of fame except two Darrell Evans Dave Kingman has gotten into the hall of fame well, he'll probably have 400 by the end of the year, right, maybe. Right, good. He may make it. Well, that would be, what, 71 homers he's capable yeah. of, right? Well, no, I thought 61. See, yeah. my addition was wrong. Yeah, but he could have 71. It's this, the left field. Back it goes. Back, 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 back. McGuire's on the board. The thing that makes him so appealing to the fans is not only does he hit a lot of home runs, he hits a lot of long home runs. Well, we didn't get cheated on very many home runs. It's not like... Oh, he's playing in a band box. It wouldn't have gone out. No way. Back to the fence. Back it goes to the wall. Not quite. In fact, he's played. Oakland was the toughest park in American League to hit home runs in until the last couple of years. Five outs for McGuire. This one is hit down the line. Will it stay fair? Heard from Buck Martinez in the beginning. Two longest home runs hit here in Cleveland. Back it goes to center field. Goodbye. He needs one more to assure himself of getting into the contest. Six outs for McGuire. Walker with nine. Tino with five. Brady Anderson and Jeff Bagwell with four. He would win a tiebreaker in the first round tiebreakers 
par, whoever has the most home runs at the break. With McGuire leading everybody, McGuire would be in if he hit number four, and Brady Anderson would be out. This one to not going to make it. And very quickly, McGuire with eight outs. So a little tight time here. Griffey didn't make it. The crowd has picked up. Here it goes to dead center field. Back, 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 back. Gone into the picnic area. Good thing nobody was dining. <laughs> Now, when we go to the second round, which McGuire is now assured, they wipe the slate clean. So Walker's nine, don't give him a five home run head start on McGuire. Look at this roll. Oh, it just squeezes its way over the top of the fence. Does a little shoe polishing there. <laughs> Missed that one. That's it. McGuire with a couple of late bombs, including the one in center field, has five homers. So McGuire moving on to the second round. The first round is complete. And with a nine spot, the leader, Larry Walker. Given Mark McGuire and Larry Walker something to shoot at here in the second round of the home run derby. As for Mark McGuire, I don't think he'll back down from the challenge. And Joe. We like to put these charts together of the home runs as we've shown earlier with Walker and Tino. Look at McGuire. Some of his are in outer space, especially that ball way up at the top of the screen. Well, it looks like he hits the ball to all fields, but basically he's from center field around to left field. That's basically where it hits his home runs. Every once in a while, fastball might get on him, and he will hit it over the right field while he's that strong. But if he's going to hit the long ball, it's going to be almost straightaway left field. Back to round two of the home run over here in Cleveland. The imposing figure of Mark McGuire. 31 home runs at the All-Star break, which is not his best figure at the All-Star break. Remember his rookie year, he had 33 in 1987, ended with 49. The record at the All-Star break for home runs is 37 by Reggie Jackson in 1969. ESPN's Reggie Jackson, I should say. He hit only 10 after the break to finish at 47. McGuire, will this one hold up there? No, it's off the wall. Second behind Reggie at 37. Just get this trivia out of the way. Same year, 1969, Frank Howard had 34. But the Senators ended up with 48. 61, Maris had 33. Those are your numbers. This one will not. There are three. There are several at 33. McGuire in 87, Maris in 61, Junior, Frank Thomas, and Mac Williams all from 94. Just get the trivia out of the way. The 31 is still impressive, although not a record. Well, McGuire's got to get in that group, Joe. Yeah, he's struggling a little bit here. You know, the question about McGuire, how many home runs would he hit, has always been about hell. Whether he could stay healthy or not, enough to hit 60 home runs. And he's been relatively healthy this year. If he can stay healthy, obviously he has a chance. It's just went a long way to left center field. Back it goes. Oh, it's a wall scraper. That one, I think, brought, hit the stratosphere. So McGuire's got to get going here. He only has three outs left with no homers. Do you think with all the pressure that you can hit 60 or 61 home runs? No, I don't think so. I don't think in today's media, with all the hype and with the way the game's played today, I don't think, I think they'll just stop pitching to him. There's one. Back, 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 back. Gone. You have to remember that when Roger Maris hit his 61, Mickey Mantle hit behind him. Yep. Play. Can we see if that ball Maybe hit? I want to look at that again. Off. Yeah, we oh, may have got a scraper. 456 feet. We may have had a scraper there. Let's look for a scraper. Nine outs. 
being honest with you, I think it was well, only the final two that goes in. He needs a couple more here. Yeah, he does. Because Walker is in the groove. Oh, yeah. that's a foul. Well, so McGuire was just a pair. Oh, uh. You never know. He uh. could make it, but I'm sure he's not thrilled. Let's go to Buck. Mark, you only hit two, but I don't know about you. I thought that was dead center when it went off the bat. The, the, what? <laughs> Looked like it hit dead center off the side. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, whoever. Uh, maybe next year. All right, Mark. Thanks a lot. Thanks. All right. Let's take a look at this. Let's take a slow motion. Maybe we get a scraper here, get a million dollars for someone. I mean, you were right. This ball, the, the, the sign was too close for him, probably. I mean, let's take a close look here. Where's my telestrator? Well, no, no. As Maxwell Smart would say, missed it by that much. <laughs> Man, a million bucks for someone. We've seen two oh. million dollars missed by three inches. He thinks he's got it right there. Look at it. No. <laughs> Well, McGuire needs a poor performance from Larry Walker, but Walker by far and away had the best performance thus far with nine in the first round. The strongest players to all fields face off during the All-Star Home Run Contest. Tough to bet against McGuire. <laughs> yeah, it is. Montino! Uh-oh! Oh! oh. Ah, got him! It's a three-round battle of nasty cuts and cut-ups. Larry Walker! Larry Walker! What do you think, Big Cat? You got a chance? No, it's a seven. Oh, I guess it's six or seven. Oh! 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 Wow! Head off his name. He took the W on his name. He did, he took the W on Walker. Impressive, but the most oohs and ahs went to Mark McGuire. Mark just missed winning a million dollars for a fan. Tino Martinez's swing proved most consistent. Tino didn't hit any baseballs out of sight, but he did outdo Larry Walker in the final round. Three home runs to one. Again, Moyer hadn't lost since just after the Memorial Day. The A's go up two to nothing. It's his third home run and four at bat. The man they usually expect is Big Mac. Next batter, the hanging curve hung out to dry. McGuire ties Joe DiMaggio for 42nd on the all-time home run list. He leads the majors this year with 32 of them. Mariners down 6-3, rallying in the eighth. Gabe Buhner off the bench. Goes the other way, scores Cruz Jr. and Russ Davis. It's now a one-run game. Then Peter, a big moment in the eighth with two aboard for Charles. Uh, absolutely. Now Charlton pitches to Matt Stairs, strikes him out. Now the decision is, do you pitch to Mark McGuire? I mean, after all, well, he does pitch to him. Makes the, pay. the reason was all the way to the wall. that they were afraid with Jose Canseco able to come up in the on-deck circle. They decided to go ahead and pitch to him. He hit the double, broke the game open, and kept him from getting beaten in the bullpen. Yeah, it was a one-run game, but uh, as you mentioned, he'd rather pitch to Canseco. Al Davis play. renovated top of the second, one nothing Royals, with Carlos Reyes in going. trouble. Man at first, Cooper. Scott Cooper crushes the pitch deep to center. Right Damon Mayshore to the wall. Got it. Robbing Cooper of the home run. Let's look at it again. Mayshore will bring it back from over the wall. Bottom of the fourth, 3-2 Royals. Jose Rosado in trouble, bases loaded. Matt stares the base hit into the right center field. Tony Batista scores, Mayshore scores, and the A's go up 4-3, to three. but here come the big fireworks. Next hitter, Mark McGuire against Mike Perez. The three-run homer by Big Mac is 33rd, tying him with Tino for the big lead lead. A's now up 7-3, to three. top of the eighth, 10-3 A's. Oh, oh Jeff Montgomery. 
Hits this across the bay. Solo shot his 34th. He's up 11 to 3. McGuire's Bash brother, though, had a totally different game. First inning, Jose strikes out on the high heat. Then on the high heat in the fourth. Again in the fourth. He strikes out on the breaking ball as they bat it around. Sixth inning, strikes out on the slider. Eighth inning, looking. Canseco 0 for 5 with five strikeouts, but the A's win it 11 to 3. Royals have now lost 10 straight on the road. McGuire passing Joe DiMaggio into 42nd place in career homers with 363. Cal Jr. is next on the list with 364. On the other hand, Canseco has now struck out eight straight times. That ties a big league record for consecutive games. Royals and the Jack Warden look-alike. I loved him and heaven can wait. They came to see Mark McGuire. McGuire to left center. Thought he got all of it, or at least enough of it. He would later score one nothing Oakland. 24th double on the year for McGuire. Jason Jumby, three-run homer. His 11th, Tim Belcher, the victim. And Tim, motionless. 5 nothing A's. They would bat around in the third. They led 7 nothing. 9-1, Oakland in the sixth. Matt Stairs, you can't stop Matt Stairs. You can only hope to contain him, which the Coliseum cannot. Matt Stairs goes deep. 10-1 A's. They tack on one more. Keep that hitting streak going. Now at 21 straight, Willie Blair back on the hill, facing Giambi, and here we go again. Hitting streak at 22. Damon Mayshore coming around from first. Mayshore heading home, and he is he's safe. Barely. A's up, one zip. Bottom two, 3-1 Ariel Parade to Brian Hunter to the deepest part of the park. Cruz scores. Oh, boy. Damon. Hunter trying for it all. Trying for it inside the... Oh, the foot got in. But the Tigers lead 4-1. He's out. Top six, McGuire, Willie Blair. He'd already K'd him once earlier. And Mark McGuire going nowhere. Fast. Strike three at the knees. What's that Canseco move? Ball over the inside corner of the plate. Pull your legs back. Oh, he's gone. Jim Joyce would have none of it. And look out. For a guy that size, what do you need to throw bats and helmets for? Here comes Canseco. Dan Maselli, don't go there. High fly ball. A's trail 5-4. Nice to the Canseco blast. Bottom nine, Todd Jones against Giambi. Tying run at the plate. Curveball. Up the middle, is it through? No. Tigers win it. 6-4. Blair the winner. 4-2 and two in his second start since he comes back. Easley two for three. Giambi. The A's don't want to trade Mark McGuire. The season ticket holders because of what he means to the team on and off the field. But he is a free agent come November and the club is trapped within a $20 million payroll. So they're trying to decide if they should see what they can get for him and start to rebuild. Problem is, there aren't many teams capable of seriously bidding for McGuire. The Cardinals would love to try. But of the teams that want McGuire, only the Blue Jays with Shannon Stewart and the Marlins with Todd Dunwoody as the center fielder with which to begin the bidding. And as a 10-5 man, McGuire could veto a deal to Toronto, which incidentally is on the brink of unprecedented history.